Hi, I'm Brandon Parks, and I'm a Czech pilot in the Phenom 300 and Legacy 500. It's 135, 297, Pilot Command. It's your proficiency check requirements. So often we talk about uh, 297 check, and this is the check that's due every month, uh, six months. <clears throat> so no certificate holder may use a pilot, nor may any person serve as a pilot command of an aircraft under IFR unless since the beginning of the six calendar months before that service, <clears throat> any pilot has passed an instrument proficiency check under this section administered by the administrator or an authorized check pilot. And normally the company check pilots will do this check. Um, <clears throat> so no pilot may use any type of precision approach procedure under IFR unless it's the beginning of the six calendar months before the use, that use. The pilot satisfactory really demonstrates that, that type of approach procedure no pilot may use any type of non-precision approach procedure under IFR unless since the beginning of the six calendar months before the use, the pilot has <clears throat> satisfactorily demonstrated either that type of approach procedure or any other two different types of non-precision approach procedures. The instrument approach procedure or procedure must include at least one straight-in approach, one circling approach, and one missed approach. Each type of an approach procedure demonstrated must be conducted to publish minimums for the procedure. So normally you would see two ILSs and then you'll see like a GPS approach and a, or a, and a VOR approach, which would be two different approaches. The instrument for efficiency check required by paragraph A of this section <clears throat> consists of an oral or written uh, equipment test and a flight check under simulated or actual IFR conditions. So you can do it in the sim or in the aircraft itself. And a lot of people will do not only an oral, but the written. So a lot of times we'll do both of those. The equipment test includes questions on emergency procedures, engine operation, fuel and lubrication systems, power settings, stall speeds, best engine out speeds, propeller and supercharger operations, and hydraulic, mechanical, and electrical systems. As appropriate, the flight check includes navigation by instruments, recovery from simulated emergencies, and standard instrument approach involving navigation facilities, which that pilot is to be authorized to use. Each pilot's take, taking the instrument proficiency check must show that standard uh, Components required by 135.293E. The instrument proficiency check must, for a pilot in command of an airplane under 135.243A, include the procedures and maneuvers for an airline transport pilot certificate in a particular type of airplane, if appropriate, for the pilot of an airplane or helicopter under 135.243C include the procedures and maneuvers for the commercial pilot certificate with an instrument rating and if required for the appropriate type rating. Two, the instrument proficiency check must be given by an authorized check government or by the administrator. If the pilot in command is assigned to pilot only one type of aircraft, the pilot must take the instrument proficiency check required by paragraph A of that section in the type of aircraft. If the pilot in command is assigned to, pi to pilot more than one type of aircraft, the pilot must take the instrument proficiency check required in paragraph E A of this section and each type of aircraft to which the pilot is assigned in rotation, but not more than one flight check during each uh, period described in paragraph A of this section. If the pilot in command is assigned to pilot both single engine and multi-engine aircraft, that pilot must initially take the instrument proficiency check required by paragraph A of this section in a multi-engine aircraft and each succeeding check alternately in single engine and multi-engine aircraft, but not more than one flight checks 
During each period as described in paragraph A of this section, portion of the required flight check may be given in an aircraft simulator or other appropriate training devices if approved by the administrator. If the pilot in command is authorized to use autopilot system in place of a second in command, the pilot must show during the required instrument proficiency check that the pilot is able without a second in command, both with and without using autopilots to conduct instrument operations, um, competency, and properly conduct air and ground communication and comply with complex air traffic control instructions. Each pilot taking the, the autopilot check must show that while using the autopilot, the airplane can be operated as proficiency as it would be in if the second in command were present to handle air ground communications and air traffic control instructions. The autopilot check needs only be demonstrated once every 12 of calendar months during the instrument proficiency check required under paragraph A of this section.